It is very important for Europe. Uh, one, because this is the most dramatic humanitarian crisis of the last uh, decades. Uh, and for us to forget about nine million people who are pushed out of their homes, this is the equivalent of Ireland and Croatia together. As, as Europeans, this is, this is impossible. We cannot do that. But also because it is a crisis happening at our doorsteps. We already have uh, nearly 2.7 million refugees from Syria in the neighboring countries, destabilizing a region that is our neighborhood. Uh, if we don't help inside Syria, more people would flee. If we don't help the neighboring countries, they may collapse with a risk of a refugee uh, crisis coming all the way to us in Europe. So it is morally right and it is also in our own self-interest to stand by the Syrian people and do all we can to help. The, the EU is the largest contributor to meet the needs of the Syrian people. We have provided together with the member states almost 2.7 billion euros. Uh, and that is not only crucial, life-saving, but it is a stabilizing factor in the region. Uh, we have been in the lead on seeing that the crisis requires a more comprehensive response. The first to say, not good enough to just help the Syrians, we have to help their neighbors. We have to help local communities, we have to provide macroeconomic support to Lebanon and Jordan so they don't collapse. And we have been the most powerful voice to insist on United Nations Security Council resolution on humanitarian access so people inside Syria can get help and have some hope that they can survive this madness. Well, the, the, the most terrible thing uh, that is happening in uh, Syria is that the fighting has intensified over time and uh, the multiplicity of opposition groups and the fierce, the fierce attacks uh, from the government forces mean that for millions of civilians the availability of help is very limited. 220,000 people live in the so-called besieged areas where no help get in, gets in and they cannot get out, they cannot leave. Another Three and a half million Syrians are in places of very intense uh, fighting that they get help occasionally, but certainly not, not sufficient to sustain them. And for humanitarian workers, this is the most dangerous place. So we have already uh, lost uh, uh, nearly 40 people in this fighting, many more wounded, many more kidnapped. And, and I want to say a word of thanks to the humanitarian uh, workers in, inside Syria, people who risk their lives to save the lives of others. What more can the, can, uh, the EU uh, do? Certainly to be the most convinced and strong voice in favor of a political solution, of, in favor of, of peace negotiations. We have to get to a point when the parties of the conflict find a way to, to, to reach peace. Uh, we, we know it from our own history in Europe that every war, even the worst war, ends. What we don't know about Syria, how many po more people would die before, before that happens. Well, the, the most important lesson we, we learn is that uh, we have to think of the unthinkable. We have to prepare for very bad developments. Pray for the best, prepare for the worst. And in the case of Syria, we have been anticipating developments and moving our assistance uh, very, very, very forcefully, although of course conditions are so difficult that only at best half of the people that need, need help inside can, can get it. Uh, what it means is like in the case of the Central African Republic, anticipate crisis, 
act swiftly, target the most vulnerable people. But Central African Republic is actually a crisis with a moral of its own. The country has been forgotten by the world. And the very big lesson there is that we cannot afford us as world community to forget a country turning into a failed state. Why we have forgotten about the Central African Republic? Because it looked like it doesn't really matter for the neighborhood and for the rest of the world, but it does. It matters to its own people. Now, when the crisis deepens so much, it is a threat to the neighborhood and a risk of, of somalization, a risk of a, yet another place where very bad people get ready to do very bad things all over the world. Uh, what we have done over this uh, uh, four and a half years uh, is remarkable in policy and operational terms. In policy terms, we have adopted new policies in the European Union that stretch the humanitarian assistance to the maximum. For example, a new food assistance policy. No more we dump on countries in trouble our agricultural surpluses feeding the hungry but killing the local farmers and creating aid dependency, meaning that next year and the year after we have to pay more and more. We now provide cash and vouchers and food only when local markets don't work. Uh, we have adopted a resilience policy, meaning that we invest, together with our development colleagues, in improving the capacity of communities and countries at risk, risk of uh, climate-related uh, uh, disasters, uh, uh, to to withstand shocks that come. In other words, cut the humanitarian cost of the future by reducing the, uh, the risks uh, of people to, to these shocks. Uh, in operational terms, we have moved uh, mo most of our people in the field. Now we have uh, 140 senior staff members in the most dangerous places of the planet. Uh, actually, of the total 740 uh, who work for ECHO, ECHO, more than half, 440 are in these uh, fields, uh, 300 are here in Brussels. And we also have taken a very, very serious look at how we work, we ourselves. We have done a review of every single process that we have to eliminate what is not contributing to results. And, and we got some 15, 20% efficiency gains uh, from it. We also have reviewed how we work with our partners. In, we, in some areas, we ask for more. We ask for more focus on results. We ask for more visibility for Europe, gratitude for the sacrifice of our citizens. In some areas, we ask for less, less bureaucratic burden, less reporting that is uh, not necessary. We live in a world where needs are going rapidly up and resources are not falling. We absolutely have to emphasize focus on results and, and efficiency. Today, we face a very tough uh, funding uh, situation because last year was so extraordinarily difficult. And we need to make sure that we get budget reinforcement for which the European Parliament is absolutely crucial and has been very, very supportive. But we need to, to always think that this is a sacrifice of the European people when they themselves face hardship at home. And for that sacrifice, the best way to express our gratitude is to make absolutely the best possible use of this money. Save more lives, reduce more suffering.